Hi, it's Wendy again from Summer Bay Studio. In my previous two videos, I talked about choosing watercolor paper, what works for you. It's not technical. It's my quick and simple method for beginners to get started and take action quickly. And the second one is about choosing your color palette. How do you know what you're going to want to paint? So I hope you have uh, time to go and look at those and I'll put the links below so you can go do that. But today I'm going to be talking about paint brushes and you can't paint without them. So here is what we're going to be talking about. I'll be right back. Let's talk about brushes today. Unlike in my previous videos where I went small to large, this time I'm going to go from large to small because that's how you usually paint. If you are doing a large painting and you're going to need to lay down really large washes, you will want a big brush. I have a couple of examples here for really large brushes. So if you're doing like a full sheet of watercolor and you want to wet the whole sheet so that you can get the buckling out and the, the shrinking and everything then this is a really good one it's um this is an old one it's gotten a little bit rusty so i probably wouldn't use it anymore for that but uh, it's a langnickel three inch large area artist brush and it doesn't even fit in my old jar here that i always use and you know that's not a problem because i don't paint this big anymore most of the time anyway. However, I thought you would like to know that this is a good choice for big washes. If you're doing a sky, for example, and you want to get a lot of color down and, uh, in a, and keep it wet, that's a good way to go. Here's another option. This is a mop brush. Well, it's a natural hair one and it holds a lot of water. So it's another one that you can use for doing large areas. If you lay you uh, want to do wet in wet for clouds and sky for example you can wet your whole paper with a brush like this then go in with the color right away so you can basically be working with two brushes at a time and when you start working a little smaller or in smaller areas this is a good brush it's a Japanese brush called a hake and it also holds a lot of water so for for example if I was using this piece of paper and just wanted to do a landscape I might wet the, the whole sky, for example. Then I might take, squeeze out the water and put in some blue for the sky. Uh, this is a one and a half inch one. It's spelled H-A-K-E. Very handy brush to have. Now for the remainder of these, I'm going to show you how they look and how they work. This one is a three quarter inch synthetic brush and the difference between synthetic and real hair is a couple of things this has usually more spring to it but it holds less water so we're just going to try that I've got my trusty old rag here for wiping things down and I'll show you quickly how this looks see it gives it gives a really nice line uh, fills in lots of color quickly. This is my favorite of the two. It's a three-quarter inch uh, Chalice series 450 and I've had the, most of these brushes for a long long time, many years. And I'm just going to use some of this green. This is a good one to use if you have square line. So if I was doing the side of a building, for example, and I wanted to have a nice square line, then that's a good choice to make. Going a little bit smaller, when I'm doing florals, for example, I'll often use this brush, uh, again, depending on how large I'm painting, but this is a size 12 series Holbein brush, and it's a natural bristle. Again, I try to get all the air out of it. Let's go with a different color. Love this color, it's called Opera. And because I do florals and I like bright colors, I use it quite a bit. But you can see what kind of line it makes. It holds a lot of water, so you can actually move into the line quite a bit. I suppose I should put 
some uh, notes here as we go along because this is a 12. The others are three quarter inch. That way you can use this as a reference. Here's another one I use a lot. It's a uh, Talens 110 Pure Red Sable. And Red Sable holds a ton of water. So if you're working at a on a piece where you need to work continuously and you don't want to stop and pick up paint again, this kind of brush works really well. This also is a size 12. Let's go with cadmium yellow here, dark. Very similar line. So it's just a matter of preference. This one's a little bit shorter bristles, which I get, I think for me it gives me a little bit more control. Here's a few other in-between sizes that I use. This is a number 8 HJ series 970 and it is a synthetic and you can see like it's got white white bristles. They're very springy. Synthetic brushes are often a lot less expensive than natural bristle ones. So depending on your budget, if you just want to start out and try some things, synthetic brushes are just fine. Because a lot of things you'll be working on is getting to know the paint, how it acts, how water reacts with it, what kind of things you like to do. So here's a line for this one. Oops, I'm not very straight here, am I? Again, that's a number eight in a synthetic. And these ones are all round. These two are flat. This one is made to look like a natural bristle brush, but it's actually not. And it's a, a 3 8 inch scepter brush, or number 606 by Windsor Newton, made in England. This kind of flat brush, as I mentioned with the others, is great if you're using uh, it for flat lines. So if I were, for example, putting shutters on a building, and wanted to make sure it's got nice square corners. That's what I would get with a brush like this. And that's when I would use a brush like this. This color is permanent magenta, if you like it. Now you know what it looks like. This one is also a flat one, and it's but it's got a, a rounded end on it, which you would use for different things. It's a number four. Let's just have a look at how it goes. This is an ultramarine blue, one of my favorite colors. But you can see already that it doesn't hold quite as much water as does a natural bristle brush. I have to keep dipping my color in there to get some intensity. So that's good reason to have a natural bristle brush. Okay, now moving on to some smaller brushes. Because I like to work small and I like detail, I tend to have a lot of smaller brushes as you can see by my little pile here. This one is a number six. It's a Rembrandt brush by Talens, a number 100, and it's pure Kalinske sable. And let's, let's use this one. This is a cadmium red light. That's the kind of line I would get from that one. It holds so much water though that you can actually do do finer work and have it give you a precise point. Now these two are my very favorite. Um, you can probably tell because they have no tip left on them. I wear them right off because they're number four and they're actually two different makes but this one with the orange tip is an 8404 Raphael brush also Kalinsky from France and this one is a number four Rembrandt 100 Talens Pure Kalinske brush. But you can all already tell how much it, it picks up. And I apologize for not having a, a nice pointed tip on it, but like I said, it gets used a lot and I'm due for a new one. All right, that one is number four. Actually, I think I will go ahead and show you what this one looks like. Let's see, let's do permanent rose. It's a really pretty color and it's really great with florals. You can see how scruffy my brush is. I don't use this one a whole lot anymore because of that, unless I'm going to just be scrubbing stuff out. So this is the same here. Now, I've got a couple of synthetics here. This one is a number six and this one's a number four. So this one is going to be very similar to that one. Um, but because it's synthetic, you'll find it doesn't hold as much water. And this one is a number four in a synthetic as well. Let's 
try, let's go with this phthalo green. Because it has such a tight, tight bristles and, and a bounce to it, it doesn't spread out as much when you press on it. You have to actually press a little bit harder than you do with a natural bristle brush a lot. Now, if you're going to use, do really detailed work, there's a, a lot of little tiny ones you can get. This one is a number one, and it, it's a sable brush. But it also has been uh, used rather a lot. So while it holds quite a bit of water, it's super tiny, and it's good for fine detail. This one is a zero, uh, and this is a lizard. Alizarin crim Crimson, which is also just a dazzling color. And you can see what a fine line you can get with that. So if you're doing stamens on a flower, for example, this kind of brush is perfect. I have uh, another little zero one with a, a very tiny point. And this is from Opus Framing, which is a store that, that's in British Columbia. And it's their brand. So this is an ultramarine, ultramarine violet. Again, very similar line to the previous one. And one more. These come in different sizes too. Um, this is called a rigger, which is great if you're doing rigging on a ship, a painting of a ship. But it's also great for uh, vines and things like that. So let's use a green here. This is a sap green. And I'll just show you what you can do with this. This is a little bit bigger one. I do have a smaller one as well. But if you're doing these kind of sweeping moves, this kind of brush is, is perfect. And it does come to a fine point. This one is a Gold Sable, Series 900. And you can get that in different sizes too. And again, depending on what size of paintings you want to do. So that's just a brief overview of some different brushes, what they can do, a little bit of a look at some of the paints that I use. And I hope that you get some really good value out of this video. I'll see you again next time. And don't forget, let's make life pretty.